Lately, I've seen a lot of talk about how it is almost near impossible to find a role as a Rails developer. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways you could 10X your chances of getting a role. Without a doubt, the hardest part about, I think, finding a role right now is the economic conditions. So at the time of this video, the world's kind of upside down as far as monetary policies, all that stuff, politics, you name it. I won't go into detail of everything there, but it's just plain hard to find a job right now. And I think I've been seeing that in a lot of communities, a lot of Reddit threads, all that stuff. People are hurting. So um, that's by design. Um, the interest rate, everything, all that stuff has been tweaked. The Federal Reserve's adjusting that, increasing interest rates, and it's, it's making everyone have to tighten budgets, which means layoffs and all that. Um, and without getting too political, it's like their own doing. Like they, if you print money, what do you expect? That aside, I think on top of that problem is Rails specifically or Ruby in the community, the roles are few and far between. And I think that's commonly the case because uh, as of lately, it's been promoted as a one person framework. So if it's a one person framework, why would you need teams of people to communicate and build upon it? But then you see teams like Shopify or GitHub or something that are just massive teams that use Rails every day, make it better, con contribute to it and all that. So I think there's a place and a, a time that you can be a Rails developer and find a role. Yes, it's increasingly hard, um, especially if you're a junior. And I think that's what we've been seeing. There's a lot of senior roles because people want, for obvious reasons, if you have a business, you want the, the best candidate for the job, but you, there's no like, contingency plan there. So once those Rails developers leave, maybe they'll retire, who knows, who's gonna come in and subsidize, you know? So I think there's maybe a, a growing trend where that changes. Hopefully it ships and more young audience can get in there and start from the bottom, work their way up. I would actively support that if I could personally, but that's kind of my, I guess my talking point of this video is just kind of chiming in on that and how maybe you could stand out as a, a new developer or a novice developer trying to get started, trying to get hired just in the door, you know? So my obvious step one would be to actively search like every day, like make it a job in itself to find uh, roles that pique your interest, but also just roles that you think you could manage. And even if it's a little above what you think your pay grade is, apply anyway. And a lot of times employers will, you know, interview you if they give you the time of day, hopefully, and, you know, assess things out. A lot of times, in my opinion, in interviews I've been in my past, it's all really based on personality. Are you a good culture fit? And then from there, the technicalities of all learning things or getting familiar with advanced technology, whatever you're trying to build upon can come later. Obviously, you're going to learn as you go. But obviously, you know, that role needs to exist in the first place, going back to the initial point. So look at job boards, of course. Um, there's career sites that are OK. They're kind of spammy and yucky to me, but you can set up alerts and I find that pretty useful. So if you're looking, it is one of those things you can kind of automate and then almost automate these days, there's a lot of Chrome extensions and stuff that allow the application process to be automated, but more on that in a bit, because you don't want to look and feel like a, you know, a chat GPT robot when you're applying. You want to actually be authentic and be someone they want to actually hire. So keep that in mind. The second thing, which I've found honestly through my channel here is finding something you're okay at and just capitalizing on it. If you see something that works and just building upon and, and, and you know, it has proved its worth, keep doing that thing. Because ultimately, whatever that moment of time that sparked that thing to work, chances are you can do it better the next time and chances are it's gonna even scale past your own you know, perception of what it could be. So for me, I wanted to learn uh, Rails in the beginning. That's the whole point of this channel when it started. I do other stuff, but because I'm a front end guy by nature, but I went to the back end too because I wanted to learn all the logic and Rails was my tool of choice at the time. So I learned in public and pu published just videos every week, pretty much. And ultimately that brought me roles, that contracted roles, um, full-time roles, all that stuff. Because the employers, there's like actual, you know, public perception of, oh, you know, he you know, he's actually knows what he's talking about. It's not just a resume I'm, I'm contributing. It, it puts me a little bit ahead of the pack. Now I'm not the best in the world, but I'm like advocating 
the pursuit of trying, like the grit of grinding every week to push something out there. So if you could find something like that, I'm not saying start a YouTube channel, but that is an idea. Um, but you could just develop a niche expertise on a specific thing, maybe specifically to Rails itself. Uh, that's really going to make impact later on and it might not feel like it at the time you're going to be grinding and no one's going to care and i still have that like i'll push stuff out videos get no views um twitter i try to tweet i honestly don't like tweeting but i know that if you don't market things they don't see this, the face of day so you got to kind of just push through the cruft and get through it all and make it work so it's harder than it sounds and is easier said than done, of course. Coming from the design world, personally, I'm a product designer, but I also do engineering. So I'm kind of, I guess you'd say a UI engineer, UX engineer these days, product designer, I don't know. Building an online presence of some sort, even if it's just your personal website, show off your projects, all that stuff is very crucial. People are less, they don't care, at least job providers don't care about your resume as much these days. Even a college education, like honestly, if you go to college for engineering or design, you're probably already like three or four years behind based on what current trends are. So consider that if you're going to consider school, you might just go to like a boot camp or do courses or DIY it like I did. DIY is probably the best bet because you can capture stuff you're really interested in and just go like zero to a hundred on that thing and just go crazy on it and get really good at it and then people will seek out that talent that you have got really good at because you're the best you know one of those things of course personality is huge so your soft skills talking skills writing skills are huge in this so if you can convey that even in a short form or just you know a personal format that isn't robotic isn't awkward or weird <laughs> even though i'm pretty weird um just showing your passion through it all is really going to pay itself in dividends as well. So can consider that. And then I think one thing that, like I said, is shine true for me is being more unconventional. Go against the grain on certain thoughts, processes, just kind of stand out in that way. It's, it's silly, but it does work. So if you're just always following the lead of someone else or waiting for your next task to do at your job, if you have a current job, but you're looking to get a better one or a new one, um, go above and beyond, maybe stand out in that way. And it kind of, kind of works itself out in, in the end. So you could do anything from starting a YouTube channel. Like I have, uh, create a, pa a passion project that actually is like a full serve, like self serve project. That's a rails app, launch it, you know, go through the whole motion of getting, you know, a product out there, marketing it, all those things. It's a lot of work, but it, it does prove to be worthy. It's a, per, it's a portfolio piece so you can share it and people could see your code. They could see what you're capable of. It all, it all comes back to that, you know, uh, North star of finding either a better role or starting a new company, whatever it is in that case. So finding a unique way to contribute to open source is also another idea I had. So you could consider that and employers like to see that because they know, especially if they're big on open source, if you, they see your contributor, that's already, you already know so much in just that process, like how to use Git, open pull requests, contribute, communicate. Uh, there's so many little things that happen in that process that are crucial. So if you can, you know, show that you're capable and do that, it's going to pay itself dividends and they might skip you, someone else for you in that application process, or at least move you up to the top uh, for a very, I would say competitive role in that case. Um, you could also do, I've seen a lot of, uh, Rails folks. Um, I think there's one on Kamal I saw what someone was doing, one on Turbo Native, stuff like that. Um, those things, if they're niche and they're new with Rails, if you can hit that tidal wave that's coming through or that wave and be the first to it, it kind of stands out. Uh, timing is hard with that, obviously, so take it for a grain of salt. But you could, you could still do stuff that goes back to the foundational pieces and build upon them or just refactor them and do them better. I made a course on Rails. There was no real beginner content out for Rails. It was always just assumed you're kind of like, you started and suddenly you were an advanced developer and that was kind of what worked. And the course has done really well over the, I think since 2019, I launched that thing. But you know, those things, I just, it was one of those things I was like, I saw at the time, this isn't a thing lately, so I'm gonna make it. And you did, and it worked. Uh, another thing you might consider is like podcasts. There are other Ruby and Rails podcast in the space. And I think the key to that is just consistency and longevity. If you can stick with it, it's going to pay itself dividends. 
Uh, and people really build trust through podcasts. I think that's its strongest use case in my opinion. So if you're doing more of a talking thing, like I'm starting to do with the channel here, um, I'm considering repurposing this for a podcast too, but I don't know if I have the bandwidth or desire to do a podcast. There's a lot of effort there. So those things hopefully will be ideas to maybe have you stand out. Obviously the whole process of applying for a job is painstakingly annoying. <laughs> uh, all the forms you have to fill out, submit your resume, um, you know, set up a portfolio site, refactor old projects so they look better and more modern to modern spec. Um, yeah, it's a pain, I know. So I feel feel for you. Um, I, to pre prerequisite all this, I'm employed currently, so I, it's easy for me to say is basically what I'm trying to tell you because I am not looking for a role currently, but it is one of those things that if I were, those, those things that I mentioned are really gonna be what I would focus on and less about just spraying and praying with a resume, hoping for the best and trying to look, you know, cool at the process. One little tip on the resume thing um, in the rail space as well. If you're an older person looking for a role, I would consider maybe not having your full history on the resume. So like if you've been in the you know, job scene or the rail scene for like even like 10 plus years, maybe just go back to five to seven years if less. And that will kind of, it's sad to say, but they're, they're doing age, ageism. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it when they apply for roles because they want to have a good culture fit. And then if you're like 10 or 20 years older than the other guy, they don't see that as a good thing for some reason. Um, and I think if you can kind of play that, it's not lying necessarily, but it's like just saying, Hey, in the past, you know, this few years, this is what I've been doing instead of like, here's my entire history of my life as a professional. If you're a younger developer looking for a role, I would do this, the inverse of that. Try to find things that you have done that are maybe, if it's consulting even, put that on there. That's gonna be helpful. So all those little freelance projects that you might hack on on the side or just open source contributions, those could be added to your resume if you wanna make yourself stand out a little more. Okay, I think that's enough talking for now. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any other ideas as far as what you can contribute, hacks maybe to get seen, I'd love to hear them. So leave them in the comments. Let me know below. And that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.